Welcome to CoreLogic's update on housing market conditions for December 2017. Nationally, dwelling values were unchanged in November 2017 according to the CoreLogic Home Value Index. The rate of value growth has slowed over recent months due to falls in Australia's largest housing market, Sydney, which accounts for around one third of the total value of national housing. Splitting the monthly change out into the combined capital city and combined regional markets shows that capital city dwelling values fell by 0.1% and regional values rose by 0.2%. Over the past three months, capital city dwelling values were 0.2% higher while regional values increased by 0.4%. On an annual basis, the pace of capital gains has halved over the past six months, with value growth slowing to 5.2% nationally, with the combined capital cities recording an increase of 5.5% and combined regional market values up 4.2%. The 5.2% increase in national dwelling values is the slowest annual rate of growth in 12 months. Of course, at that time, the first round of macroprudential policy changes was still working its way through lending conditions which was slowing the market. However, the 50 basis points worth of cash rate cuts eventually led to a rebound in value growth. Sydney is well and truly the driver of the slowdown in the national housing market. Since Sydney dwelling values peaked in July of this year, they've fallen by 1.3%, with the declines accelerating each month. Although values have fallen in Sydney, between February 2012 and July 2017, they increased by 75%, so the recent pullback has been fairly minor to date. Outside of Sydney, the rate of growth has also begun to slow in most other capital cities. Melbourne values have been showing consistent and moderate growth over recent months, with the growth much more moderate than earlier in the year. Brisbane, Adelaide, Hobart and Canberra have also seen their monthly rates of value growth slow significantly from the rates they were seeing earlier in the year. Perth is the exception, with values down almost 11% since peaking back in 2014. The past three months has seen a consistent but subtle rise in values. Darwin dwelling values have continued to fall, continuing the trend the city has been seeing for a number of years now. Although generally housing market conditions have slowed, the overall performance of individual capital cities and product types remains as diverse as ever. Across the individual capital cities, the quarterly change in values has varied between a 3.3% rise in Hobart to a 2.7% fall in Darwin. Over the past year, the changes have varied between an 11.5% increase in Hobart to a 5.5% decline in Darwin. The supply of new units has hit unprecedented levels over recent years, and the unit market is now underperforming houses. In fact, Sydney and Perth are the only cities in which change in house values over the past year has been inferior to the change in unit values. In the non-capital city markets, regional areas of New South Wales continue to see the strongest increase in values. Much like Sydney, many of these regions are now seeing their rate of growth slow, although a few are still seeing values rise. Many of the strongest performing markets outside of the capital cities are located close to capital cities and offer an attractive lifestyle for residents. Regional New South Wales has recorded the greatest increase in values of all regional markets, up 8.7% over the past year. The 4.5% increase in values in both regional Victoria and Tasmania have also been significant, albeit rises are more moderate than the capital cities in each of those states. Overall, regional markets remain diverse. The strongest value growth is typically found in regions adjacent to the capital cities and located in either coastal or tree change locations. In New South Wales, Newcastle and Lake Macquarie has seen the greatest value increase, while in Victoria it has been Geelong. In Queensland, the Sunshine Coast has been the strongest performed region, and South Australia's strongest region for growth was the southeast. In Western Australia, values have fallen across the state, but Bunbury has recorded the most moderate decline, while in Tasmania, Launceston and the northeast has been the strongest performing regional market. The Perth housing market appears to have moved through its decline phase. Values have increased over each of the past three months to be 0.3% higher over the quarter. This is the strongest period of growth over a three month period since June 2014. It isn't only value data which indicates improving housing market conditions in Perth. The number of days it takes to sell a home has fallen from 68 days a year ago to 59 days. The number of properties listed for sale is approximately 13% lower than a year ago and sales volumes are up 1.4% on a year ago. Growth is expected to remain moderate but it seems as if the worst of the market conditions are now behind Perth. The primary driver of the slowing housing market is Sydney and a number of macro factors appear to be driving this slowdown. The banking regulator APRA has introduced a range of macro prudential measures which have resulted in tighter serviceability calculations and a limited availability of investor and interest only borrowings. 
The first round of policy changes which focused on reducing the availability of credit to investors led to a slowdown in the housing market, which was cut short by two 25 basis point cuts to the cash rate in May and August of last year. The second round limited the availability of interest-only lending and has also led to many lenders increasing mortgage rates for both investors and interest-only borrowers. The latest September data shows that demand for interest-only mortgages in September sunk to levels well below the prescribed 30% cap. It seems at this stage extremely unlikely that the Reserve Bank will cut interest rates once, let alone twice, to provide a similar relief to borrowers to that which was provided in 2016. Overall, these macroprudential policy changes are seemingly acting as a disincentive for investment in the market and have coincided with the current housing market slowdown. Additional factors which are also impacting on the market is stretched housing affordability, particularly in the two largest housing markets, an increase in the volume of stock available for sale, and growing concerns and warnings from regulators about the record levels of household and housing debt. While the previously mentioned factors point to several weaknesses for the housing market, there are a number of reasons to believe that any reduction in values, particularly in Sydney or Melbourne, is likely to be moderate. Financial markets do not expect the cash rate to be increased until 2019, which suggests that there is unlikely to be any significant movement in mortgage rates over the short to medium term. The labour market is continuing to improve and jobs growth is becoming more widely spread and unemployment generally is reducing. Another factor to consider is as values fall in Sydney, there remains significant demand for housing via high rates of population growth. We would anticipate that it would only take a moderate fall in values in a market with so much demand to see many buyers returning. The housing market remains diverse. However, as we are now witnessing, markets don't continue to rise or fall forever. They run in cycles. After values have risen by more than 70% in Sydney over the past five and a half years, values are now falling. While following falls in excess of 10% in Perth, we are now seeing some stability return to that market. Overall, the slowing of Sydney's housing market, given its recent growth, should not come as a surprise. Furthermore, a slowing of the nation's largest housing market will result in weaker headline growth figures for the national housing market, a trend we expect to continue in 2018. If you would like to keep a closer eye on the housing market, check out the CoreLogic website where we are updating our perspectives on the housing market on a daily basis www.corelogic.com.au